Hey yo, dear diary. Today I want to tell you about uh, the last year and a half as a new biker. Well, I think I made a right pig's ear of it, and it's all gone a bit peat dong. But uh, here we go. Part one: getting started and pushing on. So, where to start? The beginning's a good place as any, I suppose. So it all started in January 2020, just before COVID. After being in hospital and being lucky to walk out with any serious consequences, regretted so many things. I spent my whole life dreaming, watching and reading everything I could get my hands on about doing world trips, especially on a motorbike. And the last 20 years had suddenly passed in a flash. I had been putting it off my whole life and the thought of not even having tried it sat next to worries and thoughts about my family and friends and how jam should always be first. I fixed myself that I was going to do this world trip I've been dreaming about my whole life and I wasn't going to waste another day. So just over three months later I still hadn't done anything. After all I had plenty of time I said to myself. Plop. 30 seconds later I was on Google looking at the process of getting a license and I needed to do something apparently called a CBT, compulsory basic training, and then a theory test which had a number of parts, and then something called a module one, and which is a maneuvers test in the compound, and then the module two, an on-road test. It all seemed quite straightforward, but a lot more work than my previous licenses. That's the process, so that's what I was going to have to do. So I called up the local Honda, um, as it was the closest and they had just closed down their training lot and they'd just been sold and no longer offered anything in Derby. The second, due to Covid, were closed. Um, the third said they were waiting to see what would happen with the new Covid rules but they didn't offer anything at the moment. And they were quite far away. Was this a sign? I was an idiot. I'd wasted my opportunities and I should have kept looking but I didn't. With everything happening I was so worried about my family so my own plans looked a bit self-indulgent. As I busied myself with my work, my chores and my other duties, they came first. A few weeks later, the bug bit again. Some things were starting to open up. So I told the wife I was just going to nip in and see the local school after getting some information. But uh, not going to book anything, just to learn more. It was open. So... Um, after speaking with one of the instructors, he filled me in the whole process and told me about direct access. Um, he seemed quite a decent chap. He noticed my hesitation and suggested that he just had a cancellation on his pre-CBT afternoon session and I could try and get some preparation in. So I decided to bite the bullet, pay for an afternoon session and the CBT the next day just to get it over and done with. I then phoned the wife. She was very supportive and agreed it would be a waste of money to cancel it now. And of course I was not going to buy a motorcycle anytime soon, it would just be silly. After all, it's always good to learn new things and having another certificate cannot be a bad thing. And it was definitely going to be a hard afternoon and I was not going to have fun. It was an unmitigated disaster. I hadn't touched a motorbike since uh, South America over 15 years ago and hadn't touched a bicycle near 25 years. To be honest, I hadn't really recovered from my hospital stint. I was getting tired really quickly. I needed to try harder. When I got back, I think my wife and family could see and not had a good time of it. I hadn't expected it um, and I couldn't understand why it had happened. I had ridden before but I couldn't coordinate or get my balance. I just didn't understand why. I decided that it didn't help that I hadn't eaten breakfast and I'd skipped lunch to take the afternoon session. That must be it. I pondered in bed. I came back the next day with a bag full of snacks, lots of water, food <laughs> and my first aid kit just in case. But I'd struggled again. I just lost the touch. I think I had to change my mindset. I was a beginner again and I had to learn from scratch, so that's what I did. So I got through the morning session with the basic movements, um, getting my clutch control, but I'd struggled through it. And in the afternoon, um, the instructor took us onto the road, and it was a very different experience from what I'd remembered. 
Um, but then I got to a point when the, I had the wind in my face and I was zipping along and I let out a big whoop. I'd really miss that feeling. And I kept what the instructor had said from the start. The most important thing is staying safe, not perfect, but safe. So after I got back, I had a long chat and I walked out with a huge grin. I'd uh, pass my CBT. The end of May 2020. So I told the wife I'm going for a walk and I might pop into the garage and have a look at what they had there. Obviously I wasn't going to get anything, I had a lot to learn and the bike just wasn't going to happen. It was too expensive. I've been looking in the paper since passing and um, nothing had really come up. So I've been told that a Varadero would be ideal, um, but there are only a few in the country and quite expensive for a 10 or 15 year old bike. More than I could afford. I'd ideally wanted something with some off-road capability, but didn't really know much else, apart from it being start of the riding season really and a lot of 125s being in short supply. I realised that I didn't know what I should be looking for. I had no mechanical ability or knowledge of bikes. I had no friends um, or really knew anybody, knew any bikers. And due to COVID, it was really difficult to meet new people. No one in my household um, had any interest in bikes or adventure travel. So I was really on my own. And I knew two things. Well, first is new is better and old is a bit worse and could have problems that people aren't telling me about. And two, well, from what I could make out, the big brands were mostly out of my price range and the few that I had found were really, really far away. And I had no means of getting there and I couldn't really ride it to test it and I didn't really have a van to get it back. So I would have to have insurance and all these other things and they weren't really going to happen. And it also stuck that I wouldn't know if something was right or wrong. I would struggle to identify any issues at the time even if they were staring me in the face, as I just believed what I was told, not knowing any better. I had watched a lot of videos and learned a lot of vocabulary, but uh, didn't really have any idea what a lot of things meant, how things worked or what things even looked like. With all this in my mind, I found my way to the local Honda dealer, which was a 15 minute walk away from work. So, as I phoned the wife, I had a huge grin. Congratulations, my dear, I chirped. I've done something that I know you're just going to agree with. Oh, yes, the list. Yeah, yeah. I'll get, I'll get those things on the way home. No, no. You know, you don't have to worry. I've just put a deposit on a brand new bike. I didn't want you to stress out about me getting an old bike that could break down. or I didn't want a wheel falling off and have an accident. So this should give you some peace of mind. As I didn't want it, but I only got this specially thinking of you. And they are offering a limited discount on this run. So I've got a brand new machine at the price that we could afford. At the end of the conversation she agreed that uh, she was right um, but we would be ashamed to waste an unrefundable deposit and I would be extra careful as I wouldn't really be riding much anyway. So I showed up a few days later to collect my new SIM NHT125. I finally had my own bike. I was en route to making my dream come true. I just couldn't believe it. My amazingly supportive family had kept me so busy I didn't have any time to be nervous or even think about it. I had planned to get some practice, build up myself and in the weeks and get my test done and boom. I would be able to have my full license. And then I could uh, part exchange my little bike for a big one. I had made so many plans and thought about what I was doing, I was dripping with anticipation for my first ride. I had thought about recording it, but I had no place to mount a camera so I left it safe in the car. I arrived, I collected my keys and got ready for my first ride. It was such an important milestone, I thought. This was going to be a memorable experience, it would be something I would always remember. So. After everything went beat dong, I didn't touch the bike for quite a few weeks. I did try to sell it back to the dealership, but losing so much money, I couldn't do it. Then I got quite angry with myself that I would give up so easily, and told myself to stop chucking my dummy out of pram and get better at it. That what I needed to do was take my time 
and get more practice in. That didn't really go so well. I needed professional help. My wife agreed. So I contacted the school again and organised a training day for the following week. July 2020. Well, today I had a one-on-one. -on -one. But not only did I get one-on-one, -on -one, but I got it with the trainer who trains, the trainers who teach advanced riding. Is that right? Okay. But I had struggled to get there on donkey. I'd stalled the bike getting it out of the school and every time I stopped. But um, I had the instructor in the year, um, keeping the traffic away from me, telling me the right things and helping me along. And after a morning of uh, Mod 1 training, I really felt better and more confident. I do think if anyone's in my position and still isn't happy or confident after a CBT, that's the really good place to start. The afternoon was my favourite and a good continuation from the morning. We took my regular commuting road and went to my favourite ice cream place, which is a really nice dairy in the peaks. This allowed me to be in a comfortable and familiar environment on roads where I'm most familiar going to a set point. This reduced the number of variables really I think for me to consider and was really really helpful. I proved to myself that I'm able to ride without any issues and not all rides were going to be like my first. The best part of the day however was on the way back so we took an alternative route through Matlock. I was watching the instructor ride and he was hardly touching his brake so I started to copy him and do the same. I did a conversation with my original a CBT instructor. He said it demonstrated planning, judgement and control. So I think this is going to be a regular exercise for me. I felt my riding was smoother, more calm, more relaxed and I was focusing further on the road, organising myself and rather than reacting to each car at the last second, I was planning ahead and I was enjoying it. But it was this ride between Tag Lane Bit Dairy shameless plug, in Buxton and uh, coming back to the school in Derby. That really made me change my mind. It gave me back that feeling of flying, that gliding along, that I'd missed so much that I wanted to have back again. The stress, panic and pressure had all vanished, all within a day. Having that day at the motorcycle school, it really put me back on the bike. I suppose it's a normal reaction now looking at it with hindsight. Uh, we all have bad experiences and we're put off by things. At this point I decided I'd rather keep the bike and I'll slowly develop myself. I'd shown to myself I could do it and if I had another bad experience, I'd come back to the school, I know that I had a lot to learn and this hadn't come naturally to me. This was not going to be a quick blast with a direct access to get my licence. Hmm. I was in this for the long haul.